Since 1844, when the Serbian chauvinist platform called Nasser Tanja was introduced in the first place, until now in the infamous Serbian propaganda has consistently aimed at overthrowing the Albanian Autochthony in Kosovo and Macedonia. This was done with the sole purpose of legitimizing their plans of occupation in Albanian lands. It is precisely within this total propaganda war that the modern myths of Serbia emerge, claiming that Kosovo is the cradle of Serbs and their culture. Serbian propaganda, having no arguments of all to oppose the Illyrian identity of the Albanian people, considered by many to be the oldest people in the Balkans, has launched the offensive against a medieval history of the Albanians, aiming to fade the devilish intention, and may interrupt the Albanian historical continuation from antiquity to the Middle Ages. Kosovo, which the Serbian nationalist calls Old Serbia, is massively inhabited by Albanians. The compact Albanian regions start from Nis in the north and reach Bells in the south. Breed distribution in the Balkan Peninsula and Asia Minor 1910. Source. Historical Atlas by William R. Shepard, 1923. Serbian propaganda and politics try to create the myth that Kosovo has never been Albanian but Serbian, although it is publicly known that Slavs joined the migration that took place later in the 7th century AD to conquer Illyrian lands and people. However, the Illyrian Thracian people, although their territory narrowed, they survived even today in Albanian lands. Much later the waves of Slavs came and expelled the Albanians, scattered throughout the Balkan Peninsula, in the western part of modern European Turkey, where they now live. From the 19th century onwards, all academic circles have accepted that Albanians are the oldest people in Europe, a direct sequential of the Pelasgians, Illyrians, Thracians, Macedonians and Eprats. Albanians are probably the oldest race in Southeast Europe, and today's people are probably descendants of the so-called Pelasgians, the early inhabitants of Greece and neighboring countries. A meaningful summary of the Millennium Odyssey of Albanians gives so much detail to Bernard Newman. Albania is the youngest country in the Balkans, but its people are the oldest. They are probably the descendants of the ancient Thracians and Illyrians, their language, despite infusions of words from neighboring races, is quite different from any other language in the Balkans. At one time they conquered the entire southern Balkans and were a powerful and dynamic people. Alexander the Great is claimed to have been of Albanian origin. Gradually they became involved in their present home, so much so that the Basques were crowded with people in their Biscayan corner, from tribes emerging from the east, or as the remnants of the British tribes, were pushed west into the mountains of Wales. Serbian propaganda tries to present medieval Kosovo with a Serb majority, relying on Orthodox churches and monasteries throughout Kosovo, presenting them as products of Serbian culture. This myth used, so much by politicians in Belgrade, has and is being used by Europe and the West to convince them that Kosovo is Serbian. In the following article we will present a complete summary based mainly on Western literature in the examination of the Albanian character of these Orthodox monuments. In light of these uncontrollable facts, we will prove how fragile Serbian propaganda is for its Russian-promoted myth apparently made for political purposes. Serbian propaganda has spread the myth of how Albanians came to Kosovo in 1690 with the help of the Ottoman Empire. For this, Serbian nationalism has invented the so-called Great Exodus of Serbs. What does the historical evidence say about this claim? Was there really a great ethnic cleansing of Serbs and the beginning of Albanian colonization? In the historical period we are talking about from now on, Albanians continued to constitute the majority of the population in Kosovo. It is important to note that at the end of the 17th century Kosovo was not considered part of Serbia. Furthermore, the well-known historian J. Serb Dusan Popovi writes, We must emphasize the fact that Serbia, which at the time of Austrian rule, 1683-1690, comprised roughly the territory of Milo's later Serbia, 1830, had about 70,000 Serbs, so we can get a clear picture of the number of people who had moved in 1699 and to what extent this movement could have reduced the population of old Serbia, Metohija, Kosovo and Shumadia. Based on the story of this Serbian nationalist historian, we conclude as follows. That by the end of the 17th century, Serbia roughly covered the territory of Serbia in the time of Milos, 1830. That until the end of the 17th century Kosovo and Ukagini were not considered as territories of Serbia. Objectively viewed, it is impossible to have displaced over 10,000 inhabitants from the territory of Kosovo, while at that time, as the current Vienna newspapers acknowledged, about 20,000 to 30,000 inhabitants had moved from all over the Balkans 
who with ethnicity were Orthodox Albanians, Vlaches, Bosniaks, etc. It should be noted that the people moving from Kosovo and Dukagini at that time were not Serbs, but Orthodox and Catholic Albanians and Vlaches, because there were no Serbs in Kosovo and Dukagini at that time, from the point of view of nationality and ethnicity. The well-known Serbian historian Jovan Tomi, who was a good expert on Serbian, Austrian and Venetian affairs, in 1913 concluded as follows. This population movement which is known in the history of the Serbian population as the great movement of the Serbian people in Hungary, led by Patriarch Arsenic III Arnarnajevi, has been dominated by a misconception which has been repeated from one book to another. Open any history of the Serb population, you will find everywhere, where especially the movement of the Serb population occurred mainly in the Serb regions, the areas of Prizren, Jakova, and Peha and that those regions were almost completely destroyed then. This is a mistake that needs to be corrected once and for all. The fact presented in that way does not tell the truth. It is a false illusion which has not been sufficiently studied but has managed to last so far. The source of this error lies in the written chronicles of the Orthodox clergy. Then, other data, contemporary events prove that many Serbs from those territories, after the rude behavior of the Duke of Holstein, left the Imperial Army together with the Catholic Albanians and crossed to the Turkish side before the Turks oppressed the Austrians. And those Serbs did not need to leave before the Turkish army, nor could they pass under Austrian protection, moreover, the Patriarch himself with his lawsuit could hardly manage to leave because the Turkish military units arrived soon after the Austrian army left so as not to speak of a mass movement of the population. The so-called Sioba Srba, or the Great Serbian Migration. Painted by the famous Serbian painter Paja Jovanovi. In the foreground can easily be seen at least six Albanians, whose white dress is visible. This important detail refutes the clear myth that all the internees were Serbs. In fact, Patriarch Arsenic III Arnajevi led his flock, which consists mainly of indigenous Orthodox Albanians from Montenegro, Sanzak and western Kosovo. In addition, it should be noted that some scholars, for example Frederick Anscombe, claim that migrations never occurred, or never on such a large scale, and describe the events as a myth created to claim Kosovo territory in 19th century. The Ottoman census, the only significant indigenous source available, makes no mention of the large-scale Serbian revolt or an early case of ethnic cleansing by the Ottomans that led to a mass displacement of Serbs and the subsequent displacement of Albanians to displacement. Those. Far from being in turmoil in 1689-90, Kosovo was calmer than the surrounding areas. The Ottomans tried to relocate population groups to some of them, but had no reason to do so in Kosovo itself. The Great Migration, like the events of the Battle of Polj in Kosovo, is a matter of legend rather than history. Whatever the number of emigrants was during the Austro-Turkish War, it remains an undeniable fact that most of the deportees were Albanians, Vlaches and to some extent some Serbs. Even in the Catholic Encyclopedia, although with some flaws, it still admits that it was the Albanians who were expelled mainly from their lands, when, in 1690, Emperor Leopold I issued a proclamation declaring that he would defend the religion and political rights of all Slavic peoples in the Balkan Peninsula, and called on them to rise up against the Turks, some 36,000 Syrian families and Albanians, led by their patriarch, emigrated from Serbia. After Leopold had given them the desired guarantees, they passed the preservation and settled in Slavonia, Sermia, and some of the Hungarian cities, where their descendants now form a considerable part of the population. The most illustrative facts corresponding to these deportations of Albanians are also provided by the Hungarian scholars themselves, who shed light on a number of Albanian settlements on the banks of the Danube or in various parts of Hungary. Although today many of these Albanians have been assimilated, their existence proves the opposite of the claims that Serbian nationalist historians try to sell. Kosovo Albanians, whether Catholic, Orthodox, or Muslim, actively participated in Austrian imperial troops against the Ottomans. Thanks to the Albanians, the Austrian army managed to reach Skopje. In his appeal to the peoples of the Balkans, the Austrian Emperor Leopold I listed the Albanians in the first place. The Albanian Archbishop of Skopje, Jeter Bogdani also gave unstinting support to the main anti-Ottoman of the uprising. He contributed a force of 6,000 Albanian soldiers to the Austrian army, which had arrived in Pristina and accompanied him to capture Prizren. Austrian sources testify that Piccolomini, a well-known Austrian commander, was greeted in Prizren by 6,000 Albanians, and among them were those who had been with the Ottoman Empire until then, but on that occasion they swore allegiance to the Austrian Emperor. Piccolomini was received in Prizren, 
the capital of Albania, Zu Prizren, Der Hauptstadt in Albanian, by the Patriarch of Kalmendi. Vatican sources say, among other things, that Archbishop Jeter Bogdani followed with joy and progress the imperial army towards Scotch. His nephew, the monk John Bogdani, said that Archbishop Jeter had personally gone to welcome General Piccolomini and made him a companion in his hometown, Prizren. An anonymous of the time says that the Archbishop Jeter Bogdani brought 6,000 Albanians to General Piccolomini so that the general's army would grow to 20,000 Albanians who rose in a rebellion. 5,000 from Pristina, 3,000 from Peha, 3,000 from Klina and Drenica, 6,000 Albanians, from Prizren, 6,000, 8,000 Albanians, etc. Jesus Wagner mentions that the Patriarch Clementinarum, that is, Archbishop Jeter Bogdani, made an agreement with General Piccolomini regarding the contribution they would give to the Albanians. Edwin Jacques, a connoisseur of Albanian Christianity, sheds light on the causes of Kosovo Albanians, either expelled or forced to cooperate with the Turks. According to him, the peace treaty between Habsburg and the Ottoman Empire left Albanians in a very difficult position. The Turks faced serious losses in Vienna in 1683, and the collapse of the Turkish role in Hungary ensued. This was the turning point in Turkish imperial wealth. The Venetians saw their opportunity. They declared war in 1684, capturing Albanian previsa and undertaking the conquest of Greece. Orthodox and Catholic Albanians also lovingly followed the advance of the Venetian armies down the Balkan Peninsula under General Piccolomini. When the army arrived in the Kosovo region, the Christians immediately took up arms against the Turks. However, with Piccolomini's death, his successor, the Duke of Holstein, acted quite differently to his allies. When he tried to disarm the Albanian villages the people turned against him. He retaliated by burning their villages and the alienation was complete. When the Austrians later made peace with Turkey, they failed to include any favorable predictions for their Albanian allies, who were once again exposed to the ruthless revenge of the Turks. Given these undeniable historical facts, it seems that there is an exodus in 1690, but not Serbian as false Serbian propaganda claims, but Albanian. The Albanians, as evidenced by a number of Western sources, bore the brunt of the uprisings, the Albanians were one of the main allies of the Austrian offensive in the Balkans against the Ottoman Empire. Politicians and nationalist priests in Serbia show how the entire Orthodox heritage of Kosovo is the cultural property of the Serbian people. But how true is this? According to Serbian historiography, the Serbian dynasty of Nemanjic invaded Kosovo in the 12th century, and so the Serbian rulers of this dynasty allegedly built Serbian churches and monasteries in Kosovo. Because of this alleged reason they belong to them. The question is what do the historical facts say? An anonymous letter regarding the Albanian origin of the Stefan Nemani dynasty on half dot, Stefan Nemani. Later, the Ithaca version Nemani was adapted into Albanian, which was previously pronounced as Nemain. With the Slavification of the name Nemain in the late Middle Ages, the Nemanja variant was adopted. This is what has to do with the origin of the name Nemanj, Iki. The suffix, ii is undoubtedly a Slavic suffix for family names. Similarly, in pre-war Yugoslavia, they attached to our family names Slavic suffixes. Ii, Vii, Ski, Av, etc. The Nemanja dynasty ruled under Albanian customary law until 1354, when Emperor Dushan passed his code, which was full of relics of Albanian customary law. The purpose of the code was to limit the use of the old Albanian customary law and to regulate legislation and legal life according to the Byzantine example. However, with the fall of the state of Nemanji I, Nemanja, in 1389, the population returned to their customs, which have been preserved among the Albanians and the local schismatics, Orthodox, in Kosovo, and the Dukagini Plain to the present day. Nemanij, Nemanij, Nemani I, were the first cousins of the Albanian prince Dimitar, Demetrius Principi Arbanensis, who is thought to have created the Dukagini dynasty on the outskirts of Peja. This is a second proof that the Nemanji were of Albanian origin. In the time of the Nemanji dynasty, jurisprudence was organized in the same way as it was organized among the Albanians in the Dukagini Plain until recently by the Council of Dignity, L. Plechnia. This is the third proof that shows that the Nemanja dynasty, Nemanji I had organized their jurisdiction according to the Albanian example. At first, Nemanja was not an excellent Zupan, a tribal head of state, but was called the Great Guarantor, a Great Guarantor, and later, influenced by the Greeks and Slavs, he received the title of Great Zupit Big. As a brilliant bailiff, he had his cavalry and men, who were his knights and nobles, and ruled through them. 
This is the fourth proof of the Albanian method of Nemanja rule, Nemani, Nemani, in medieval Raskia. Moreover, Demetrius, the prince of the Albanians, Demetrius Princeps Arbanensis, who came originally from an Albanian aristocratic family, and as mentioned earlier, was the cousin of Nemanja, after the fall of the Byzantine Empire, 1204, had given a commitment to the municipality of Ragusa that he would live in peace with the Ragusa people, and that the Ragusa people could come freely to his country without paying any taxes. This oath was given by his people, who had Albanian names and titles, such as Stepanus, Sundia, Alb, Rall Sundus Sundus, etc. Saint Simeon, Stefan Nemanja, fresco from an Orthodox church in Prizren, 1307-1309. The Nemanja tribe were close cousins of the Albanian prince Dimitar, Demetrius Principi Arbanensis, who is thought to have created the Dukagini dynasty in the Evi of Peha. Nemanja was born around 1113 AD in Ribnica, Zeta, near present-day Pajorica, the capital of Montenegro. In the medieval period, the Zeta Principality was inhabited mainly by indigenous Albanians who preserved their old Illyrian identity. This shed light on the close relations of Zeta and the rest of Albania. All the time, Zeta was closely associated with northern Albania and for some time even became involved in Albania. Ottoman sources about the Albanian origin of the population of Deacon, Lakani and Karabrig, 1617. Porta Sublime, Ottoman government, with its acts had resolved all social, economic, political, cultural and religious issues of the monastery of Deacon and its officials, had appointed the prestigious Albanians as voivodes, guards and defenders of the monastery, had appointed the Albanians to work on the property of the monastery, etc. In the Ottoman registers of the 15th and 16th centuries, Albanians were also registered with their national names. Arbanas, etc. Alban and Arnavid. In the plain of Kosovo, for example, Albanians, among others, are also mentioned by the name of the Arbanas family, 1455. Radica Arbanas, Jerdash Arbanas, Rasku Arbanas, Petru Arbanas, Bogdan Arbanas, Todor Arbanas, Branislav Arbanas, Radino Arbanas, etc. Bradak Arbanas, Mahal Arbanas, Nikola Arbanas, Dimitraj Arbanas, Branki Arbanas, Milosh Arbanas, Kin Arbanas, Andrej Arbanas, Marku Arbanas, Vikoslav Arbanas, Vladko Arbanas, Danko Arbanas, Roddy Arbanas, John Arbanas, etc. In the Dukagini Plain, however, Albanians are mentioned by the surnames Arbanas, 1485, Nikola Arbanas, resident of Peha and the village of Rudnik as well, Drag Arbanas, resident of Prizren, Nenad Arbanas, Meha Arbanas, resident of Peha district. Original photo from the Monastery of Deacon. A group of Albanians standing in front of the monastery, which was considered their spiritual temple. These data are clear evidence of the Albanian onomastic majority in Kosovo during the late Middle Ages. All tests showed that there was no mass arrival of Albanians to modify this ethnic structure of Kosovo. As a result, all Orthodox churches and monasteries were built or used by Christian Albanians. Solid evidence for the Albanian presence in the Deacon Monastery is abundant. Edith Durham notes that, Stefan Urash III, when he founded the monastery in Dachani, gave in 1330 many villages and hamlets of Vlaches and Albanians between Limit and Drini I Bard, 12. Christian Albanians have always considered Orthodox temples as their own. All the while they have used them as places of prayer. Serbian propaganda often describes Albanians as destructive of churches and monasteries, while the truth is quite different. Albanians were precisely those who preserved their Christian heritage at all times. Kosovo Albanians did not always hate the Serb church. In the 19th century, when both peoples lived under Ottoman rule, predominantly Muslim Albanians honored several Serbian shrines. The Albanian clans that surrounded the monastery of Deacon, in the far west, preserved the famous building for generations. Other churches had a similar continuity between Muslims and Christians as places where women could be healed and ensure a successful childbirth. According to scholars, Jerlikles Dujzings provides a clear picture of how Albanians later performed Hajj in their Orthodox churches. Therefore, we give a complete passage from the chapter, Zoist, the end of a mixed Dujzings pilgrimage. In July 1991 I went to visit another shrine in Zosisht, a small Serbo-Albanian village about 4 kilometers away southeast of Arahavec. Just outside the village, on a hill, is a medieval Serbian Orthodox monastery, 14th century or earlier, a shrine which has a reputation for being particularly useful in cases of eye diseases and mental and psychosomatic disorders. The church is called Svidi Vraci, Holy Healers, after its patron saints Kuzmin and Damjan. 
The church is, like Rakanika, located in the middle of the gate, but, unlike it, consists only of a single low and very clear building. I wanted to visit this shrine because, by the end of the 1980s, many Muslim Albanians from Zasitit as well as from nearby Arahavak would go to the Zasitit monastery to join the celebrations that accompany the Sabre, which takes place every year on 14 July. Dot. The story goes that before the Albanian protests of 1989, which were violently suppressed in Arahavak, Albanian pilgrims were even more numerous here than Serbs, and in a more distant past local Albanians had once joined Serb villagers in aid of the priest to defend himself against foreign Albanian attackers, Kostik 1928, 55-6. However, as a result of the tense political situation, Albanians have recently stopped visiting the monastery, and growing mistrust between Albanians and Serbs has led to the end of this mixed pilgrimage. Nadai Jagaji Sakiri in her book Memories from Bosnia during her journey through the notes of Western Kosovo. We stopped in Prizren, spent the night in Deakin, and visited the famous monastery of Deakin. It was interesting to see many women entering the church dressed in the national costumes of the Albanians, in women's shawls. I'm not sure if they were Muslims, but I thought Serbian and Montenegrin women did not have such costumes. Maybe they were Albanian Orthodox women, although I thought Albanians were mostly Muslims and Catholics. Conclude the summary of this neutral source informed by neutral sources hoping that the Western democratic world will be aware of the danger that Serbian propaganda which has spread ignorance, irrationality and lies. The democratic world must know the truth. The history and civilization of the Albanians as the oldest people in Europe must not be allowed to get angry. The future cannot be built on the foundations of the lies spread by Serbian politics and church propaganda. Even the well-known Serbian propagandist, Dobrika Kosic has admitted that the lie, a feature of our patriotism, we lie to be deceived, to comfort others, we lie for mercy, we lie to fight fear, to encourage ourselves, to hide our misery and that of someone else. We lie about love and honesty. We lie because of freedom. Lying is a feature of our patriotism and evidence of our innate intelligence. We lie creatively, imaginatively.